For those unfamiliar with this organization, the SCP Foundation is a repository of knowledge and information on all manner of inexplicable and supernatural phenomena including supernatural and or paranormal beings, objects, events and or locations. The organization captures, contains and studies these paranormal anomalies or SCPs which stands for secure, contain and protect not only the paranormal beings, object, events and or locations they investigate but humanity itself. This is necessary given the malevolent nature of many of these anomalies which range from SCP-2230, a book that gives its readers wonderful dreams of heroism and adventure to terrifying anomalies such as SCP-087, a seemingly endless staircase that descends into total darkness and is haunted by a mysterious malevolent presence. The Foundation has thousands of these supernatural beings, objects, events and or locations from all over the world. Typically, they are alerted to the existence of these anomalies by witnesses and those who have experienced them firsthand but, sometimes, these phenomena will come to the offices of the SCP Foundation looking to have themselves added to the archive. These live tryouts sometimes yield amazing results when a new SCP is identified but more often than not, these face-to-face -face applicants are rejected for failing to meet the requirements for inclusion. We're going to look at some of these who failed to make the cut as we examine 10 rejected SCP applicants. Our first applicant was a seemingly ordinary bottle of a name brand soft drink that was rumored to cause a variety of physical ailments when consumed. Those who had imbibed of the liquid in the bottle complained of toothache, acid reflux, and gastric distress as well as weight gain and late onset diabetes. While initially considered to be a potentially malevolent anomaly, it was later determined that these effects were commonplace with pretty much all sugary soft drinks and the applicant was rejected on the basis that it was simply junk food rather than anything supernatural and or paranormal. Our second applicant was brought to us by her owner whose identity will remain confidential and she is a four-year-old black cocker spaniel named Lily. Her owner explained to us that Lily is, in fact, the earthly form of a Lovecraft teen chaos god. She claimed that so long as Lily was shown lots of love, not bathed more than once a month and not fed more than three times a day, she was harmless. Break any of these rules, however, and Lily could morph into a 300-foot-tall bringer of destruction without remorse or compassion for any of the millions of souls she would devour. This all sounded very intriguing until the similarity to the plot of the movie, Gremlins, was pointed out to the selection committee and, ultimately, Lily was rejected as merely a wishful fantasy of her lonely and imaginative owner. Our third applicant was a pair of black patent leather shoes submitted by their owner who claimed that when worn, the shoes were capable of transporting the wearer across infinite reaches of time and space instantaneously. However, after several members of the selection committee tried the shoes on and none of them were transported anywhere, it was determined that the shoes held no supernatural or paranormal properties whatsoever. Nor could the man who had submitted the shoes recall any relevant facts about the time, places or events he claimed to have traveled to win quizzed about his alleged experiences. The shoes were rejected as nothing more than a simple pair of stylishly questionable footwear.
Our fourth applicant was an elderly woman from Canton, Ohio, who claimed she was the reincarnation of Jacqueline Kennedy Onassis when it was pointed out to her that she was approximately the same age that the real Mrs. Onassis would have been had she lived. She failed to understand why that would disqualify her and insisted she was who she said she was. Apart from her confusion about her identity, she was a sweet old lady and she brought a plate of cookies for the selection committee to enjoy while they considered her application. Realizing we were dealing with an elderly woman of minimal education and probably a touch of dementia, the woman was given a sandwich and dropped off at the city bus terminal with a prepaid ticket back to Ohio courtesy of the foundation's petty cash fund. Our fifth applicant was a vanilla soft serve ice cream cone that had never melted even after 43 years without refrigeration due to it being a supernatural object that defied its own physical properties. The cone was submitted by a man who claimed he had purchased it as a child and had it ever since. When asked what other supernatural or paranormal properties it held, the man replied that he was aware of no other properties the cone contained. Since the submission was nothing more than an ice cream cone that had never melted, it was rejected for being less a supernatural object than simply being ice cream of dubious quality. Our sixth applicant was a hat stand submitted by a strange middle-aged woman who claimed the hat stand had once belonged to Abraham Lincoln and had frequently held his signature stovepipe hat. When it was pointed out that made it more of a museum piece than a supernatural object, the woman dissolved into a puddle of liquid that vanished moments later right before the astonished eyes of the selection committee. Naturally. The foundation was intrigued by this event but because the woman had vanished, it was impossible to study her further. She left the hat stand behind and it now stands in the hallway of the foundation's administration building. Not as a paranormal or supernatural object but as a hat stand for use by those foundation employees who wear hats. Our seventh applicants were Mavis and Stuart Gold, an interracial Jewish couple who insisted it was 1977 and dressed and lived their lives accordingly. Their wardrobes were entirely polyester knits and they listened to nothing but disco, folk and a yam light radio. They were both convinced that it had been and remained to be 1977 ever since it had really been 1977. While this case was interesting from a mental illness standpoint, there was no claim of a paranormal or supernatural incident here so the case was dismissed as just a weird couple of middle-aged hippies lost in a time long past who didn't understand the foundation's purpose. Our eighth applicant was a man from Pismo Beach, California who claimed his belly was a malevolent being bent on ending all life on Earth. When asked to explain, the man said his belly was always trying to release its power but he was suppressing it so it could only come out in harmlessly diluted forms such as belches and flagellants. The man insisted that without his efforts to contain his gut's evil, the release of power would take the form of natural seeming disasters like hurricanes, earthquakes, and tsunamis. For his service, the man wanted the governments of the world to pay him for the global protection he felt he was providing. Foundation medical personnel examined the man and determined he was simply a big fat slob who suffered from gastric distress due to a poor diet. Our ninth applicant was a small child named Toby whose mother claimed he was a vampire. What astonished the selection committee wasn't the claim that the boy was a supernatural being but the minimal effort she'd put into trying to pull off this obvious hoax. 
She backed this story up with just a $12 costume from the Halloween store along with a $2 pair of plastic fangs. And that was it. When the committee asked the boy what he wanted for lunch, he didn't say human blood. Instead, he asked for a happy meal which convinced the committee of what they already knew. The woman was politely thanked for coming in and shown the door. Our 10th applicant was a balloon named Petey. Petey was a sentient being with a lust for power and authority unrealistic for a balloon. Petey harbored delusions of godhood and merciless global dominance but despite his sentience and the undeniable supernatural status of a self-aware inanimate object, Petey was just a balloon and how much of a threat can a balloon realistically be? The selection committee was split on their vote with half voting for Petey for being a genuine supernatural object and the other half rejecting him for being pretty much an asshole. Petey was ultimately rejected for making an inappropriate sexual comment to a woman on the selection committee in a misguided effort to sway the vote in his favor. You're clearly a group of terrifying monsters, but as the sign indicates, open tryouts are closed. You can come back next month when we'll hold them again. We're sorry if this puts you out. <laughs>